Oh, they're pushing back. They're pushing back. Oh, but Zane just fucking comes in. Oh man, <laughs> dude, they had a they had a glimmer of hope. <laughs> <laughs> and Zane's like, wait a minute, I'm 10k up. Oh, they're over 10k. They're like almost They're like 12k up right now. Ooh, Mobile Zane gets caught. The rest of them gonna spread out? Nope. He took Barats so Zane didn't go Barats. I don't like I don't like that strategy. Uh, if I, if that's what they did, I don't like that strategy of taking something so that your enemy doesn't pick it because now you're playing at a huge disadvantage because you're not playing to a composition you made up. You know what I mean? Like I would rather, I would rather like the team try to counter the pick. There's stuff that counters Barats, you know, like some heavy, like early magic burst damage. You know what I have not seen? Lunox. Is Lunox, did Lunox fall off or something? I haven't even seen her banned. Hoping that they are really being coached by Midnight. See, here's my thing, bro. Uh, I don't know what kind of effect that Midnight has for the team that's positive. Like, if you take a look at Avalon's team, now, I happen to know because I asked, when Avalon beat BTK, it was not because of something Midnight suggested. It is because the Ohio brothers scrimmed Avalon the night before, and they were adamant that Avalon, if they want to beat BTK, they need to ban all three of Zane's things. That includes Akai, Boxia, Fredrin. And they, and they, and that was, I, like, I talked with them. That, that was what they were told by it had nothing to do with midnight and if i look at the rest of avalon season i don't see anything that tells me oh man this coach really really helping them because there were so many questionable decisions